Pause Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at pausetraining.org. We're here to help you land your next big offer. Today, we're going to talk about, well, lead code solution 1,292. I cannot believe right now it, it has like more than 1,000 problems. So simply put, right, there's no way, there's absolutely no way, and it's absolutely not necessary for you to finish all of those questions before you go on interviews. Remember, essentially, you know, you just, uh, the, 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 it's not uh, time and cost efficient to do this. All you need to do is basically for each of the data structures, you just uh, brush up like five questions at most. And then uh, actually the lead code, both training lead code solution, that YouTube playlist, if you finish all of the videos, you're pretty much done. So, okay, let's get down to this problem. This problem actually looks pretty familiar. So uh, it's not the best of well-defined problem. So given a two, dimensional matrix M times N, this is called the mat and the inter integer threshold, return the maximal side length. So what exactly is the side length, right? It didn't really explain too well. The side length essentially is like, if you only have one number, the side length is one. If you have three numbers, a square is three. So the side length of a square with a sum less or equal, the threshold or return zero if there's no such square, which is totally possible. So if you look at the, this graph, right? So the output will be two because the threshold is uh, uh, is four. Because at most you can have uh, like one, 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 one. So this is equal, less or equal than threshold. All the rest are actually bigger. So you, they, they want you to return the maximum one. And then this one, you know, threshold is one. Every single element is larger than one. So you, you should return zero. So this one is a six. So if you uh, break those down, you can see, uh, sorry, not six, three. Okay, so given this problem, what is your thought? So there's a definitely absolutely, a absolute brute force way, right? So it's, a, it's like for each of the length, you can start from the uh, minimal of the row or uh, column. You literally do another kind of M, M times N uh, just to calculate the sum. So we know that's definitely not optimal. And at that moment, we should remember, we used to have this problem. I cannot find it, but I definitely saw this before. It's like a prefix sum matrix. What, so what is a prefix sum matrix? So a prefix sum matrix is a matrix that for each of the cell in the matrix represents the sum. In your original matrix, the sum in the original matrix from matrix 0, 0 to matrix i and j. So this is kind of the mathematical formula. So a quick illustration is, so let's say if this is the matrix, right? So uh, if I want to have this point, so the prefix sum matrix of this point is essentially this area, okay? And then let's say if you have, you're on this point, the prefix sum of this matrix is this point. So for this, this one, it is actually the element itself. And then if it's this one, it is, looks like this. And then if you are here, so it's uh, like this, it can be a rectangle, doesn't, need, doesn't necessarily need to be a square. So that's basically the way it is. So once you have that, you have this kind of thing. So now if I'm telling you, okay, so what is the, the sum of this area? So what you can do is you can use the sum of this area, right? You can minus the sum of the left part and then you minus the sum of the top part and then you sum back this part because for this part you minus it twice and then you have to sum it back then essentially you will get the sum of this part oh sorry i draw i, I draw this line wrong this line should be drawn up here right so which is like essentially this this kind of grade Sorry, this grid, you have to draw it back. So yeah, that said, see, it's, it has to be like either I minus one or if this is J, this should be the J minus one. So if, if you see, so this is basically the formula. So you have I plus let, you, you will have the sum at this, this particular case, um, minus I minus one, I minus one, the previous row, not this row, the previous row the length of that and then minus this part and then you plus back the, uh, the other part 
So this is how you calculate the sum. So that said, uh, you can actually have a relatively, you know, it's, it's, it's efficient in a way that it's O times, um, the time class is O M times N times minimum of M times N. So essentially it's like an N cube type of time complexity. So essentially what I did is, so uh, you get the row and the column of the mat, and then you want to allocate a plus one because whenever you calculate this, right? So it's just easier. So now if you have a, if you have a, like a here, if you allocate a, a, the array size plus one, so for one, because for every every element, the prefix sum is calculated as, you know, um, is basically like a, this value plus this value minus this value and plus itself. So translate it into code. Uh oh, okay. Let me see. I think I have it here. Yes. So translate it into code. It looks like this. So the initialized part, you have your left part, the left part plus the right part minus the diagonal part. And then you have to plus the value on its own. So this is basically you constructed the prefix sum array. And once you have, uh, because if you allocate one extra, right? So all those are defaulted to like to zero. So you can just calculate everything just like, just like its own. For example, it's one, it's zero plus zero minus zero, but plus one, now it's still one, right? So um, yeah, just to calculate it this way, you realize it's way easier. And then you basically, doing this kind of like a brute force way, right? So you just basically choose the minimum of the row and column. And then for each of the row and column starting, you know, we want to, to start from the maximum to, to minimum. So we're doing this like a triple for loop, nested for loops. And then here we're essentially calculating the sum. Uh, I, I just explained earlier. And then if it's less or equal than threshold, you just uh, return the results. So this is the brute brute force way, an ON cube method, right? There's other two optimizations you can do. Uh, actually, uh, if you follow the hint, it, it asks you to use binary search. So there's a binary search way you can do. Uh, I linked the the solution here, uh, not this one, but I think it's this one. Yeah, it, it is this one. So it's the same thing when you constructed the sum, right? The, the matrix. And then you can essentially do a binary search because of what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to find this condition, which is uh, exactly like we coded before, whether the square exists condition, and then we want to find the maximum one. So what happens if the maximum one is uh, like a super, super down in the left part, which is really small. So if you're going from the right all the way to the left, it's not efficient. You can always cut in half, say, okay, should, you, should I go left or right? So if you need to go right, you can just binary search way to do it in right. So that it will basically helps you in a log minimum of M times N solution. There's actually a smarter way, um, shout out to uh, drunk piano to solve this is, is whenever we constructed the sum, right? We can actually, the prefix sum, we can actually, along with this process, we can actually uh, also calculate the length. Um, this is purely based on the assumption that on this problem, if you have, for example, a square that is uh, uh, five by five that satisfy your need, that means there's definitely a square of four by four can satisfy your need. So which also means basically that will definitely be a square of three times three, two times one, one times one times one, right? Because all those, it, it is the sum of all those values. So that's why essentially what this most optimal algorithm is doing is whenever we construct this, the, the array, you're like, okay, let's just check if there's any square one can satisfy my need. If there's square one can satisfy my need, I just increase my, my length to be, actually it's here. I just increase my length by one. So now I'm looking for, is there any square of two that can satisfy my need? So that's basically just keep increasing because if there's a square, let's say the maximum solution is a five, there has to be a maximum solution of two, and then there has to be a maximum solution of three. So you, in that case, you actually won't miss anything by this this scan. So that will give, basically give you the best solution. It's kind of hard to think. Uh, I would say uh, in the real coding, if you have the ON cube solution, if you can code it up correctly, things should be fine. All right, uh, let me know if, if you have any questions, uh, leave any comments below. If you like the video, please um, 
the subscribe and then give it a like button click the like button until then i will see you guys next time bye